ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, I have to greet you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, weekend is just over for the Middle East and it just began for the people in the West. So I hope you guys are starting off your weekend uh, in, in a nice way. And what better way to start off your weekend than with hashtag LNT episode 15 of season 2. Now we did begin season 2 just to remind you guys from the beginning of Muharram and it will run until the end uh, of Safar. Now tonight's episode we're talking about helping others but the effects might harm you or might affect you sometimes. Uh, so what that is you guys are going to have to find out but after the short break. So let's do, do <laughs> Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, more than 380 people have been confirmed dead and at least 540 others injured after a tsunami uh, triggered by a magnitude of 7.5 earthquake that hit an, Indo uh, an Indonesian city uh, just yesterday on Friday. Now, waves came up to almost 3 meters, 10 feet, uh, which swept through uh, the Paulo uh, on Suwalwi uh, Island. Now, strong aftershocks uh, rocked the city uh, on Saturday where thousands of homes collapsed uh, alongside many hospitals, hotels, and shopping centers. Now, uh, rescue efforts are underway, but uh, it's, it's, it's a huge deal. I mean, if you guys seen the video, uh, which inshallah will pop up in a few seconds, uh, or the footage uh, to show you what was going on during that tsunami. Uh, but, all right, so uh, Alhamdulillah, hopefully, inshallah, those uh, who were rescued, inshallah, uh, a healthy, uh, well, I blanked out. Inshallah, everyone gets rescued safely. So let's leave it at there. Let's go jump into tonight's topic real quickly. Now, welcome back, dear viewers, to tonight's topic. Now, the feeling of helping others in general with anything, you know, has this comforting feeling to it. You know, we humans, even animals sometimes, have the urge to help others, even when we're not supposed to or we're not expected to. Now, this positive vibe that we get from helping others uh, hits you directly after... Uh, you know, just little things that you do for others, like giving up your seat for an elderly, uh, for an elderly person on uh, the bus, or, you know, you being a gentleman and getting up to let a lady sit down in your seat, or sparing some change that you have for the person, for the homeless person sitting on the sidewalk with his hand out or hat or so on. Now, this act indeed is not confined to any religion or faith. Now, Allah, God the Almighty has instilled this priceless feature, so to speak, this priceless trait in the hearts of all of his creatures. But it depends on the creature and how he takes it further as he or she or it pleases. Now this all, this all falls under the category of kindness and generosity. But what happens if we take it up a notch? And that's what we're trying to find out tonight. This time, instead of just giving or helping out another person, you're actually sacrificing something from your own. Maybe sometimes even your comfort for the benefit of the other, a.k.a. altruism. Let's say you're walking down a street, you know, in your cities, and you find a homeless person, but you look in your pocket and there's only one dollar. One buck in your pocket, or two dollars, you know, some change. Now you're hungry, you're trying to buy a, a lafat falafel. You know, you try to buy a falafel sandwich or anything to eat, you know, j just to get that hunger over so you can get home and eat. Now do you give that spare change to that homeless person and then wait a few hours of hunger until you get home, eat or get some 
more money to go and buy? Or do you just walk by and ignore him? Now, this is altruism on one level, one simple level. A higher or more intense level would be giving or would be an example of, you know, so you imagine you're on the beach and someone is drowning in a far distance. Would you risk your life to save that individual? And that's what we're talking about tonight. The question for tonight, which we're asking all of you, is, is there a limit to altruism? That's a question for tonight. Is there a time where you say, you know what, no, that's enough. It's not worth it anymore. Is there a limit to altruism? That's your question for tonight. Now get your phones ready. I'm getting my phone ready as well. To dial in that number right there via WhatsApp, plus 964-774-067-1836. And let us know what you guys think about tonight's question. Is there a limit to altruism? Let's take a quick break. Come back to you guys very short. Welcome once again, dear viewers, for joining us tonight. Now, tonight's question is very simple. Tonight's question, for those who don't know what altruism means, altruism is generosity, but taken to another, to a higher level, so to speak. It's safe to say that. So it's sacrificing sometimes something from your own self. We're not talking about cutting off your limb and giving it to someone. Absolutely not. But what we're talking about is sacrificing something that might have an effect on you. No, for example, hunger, sacrificing the, the, the only meal you have at that moment to the person who hadn't had a meal for over a week. That's what we call altruism. It's a, it's a higher level of generosity, and that's a question for tonight. Is there a limit to altruism? The number to call in at is plus 964-774-067-1836. The lines are now open to receive your phone calls your text messages and your voice notes all via WhatsApp. So it means it's everything's free. You're not gonna pay anything because everyone has Wi-Fi and data. Now, going back to altruism. Now we all know that altruistic behavior can be, or can be seen as a desire for a person to prosper, you know, to prosperity uh, of another person. Not having any expectation of getting a reward um, from the individual that you just helped, you know, it, 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 it's some level, and it, it is, it, it may indicate some level of egotism. A lot of people do generosity in a form of uh, a favor. You know, I'm generous to you, but it's a favor. So in the near future, you don't have to make, pay me back. Now, studies into altruistic behavior found that over uh, the older children's actions are based on social approval and then adolescents behavior is due to the fact that it makes them feel good about themselves doing something good even as a little child when he does something good he feels and, that, and that's perfect when someone does something good you feel good about yourself and that's what the whole point of altruism is it's to make the self prosper it's 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 to grow and make yourself, um, you know, you know, it's, it's satisfaction to the self. Now, altruism can be broken down into two parts, two types. There's the biological altruism, and, there, and there's the reciprocal altruism. Now, what's the difference? Now, the biological altruism, it's those who are close to me are worthy of, you know, my favors, are worthy of me being extremely generous to you know type of people people who are close you know your son your father I have the same dress shirt as him um, uh, your mother your sisters your relatives you start out with them and that's absolutely perfect if you feel like they're and it does you know generosity starts at home you don't see a greedy person at home but when he goes out he helps the needy we never see that it's, it's it has to be either both ways or just one way because it starts at home and then it continues um, outside the home to help the others as well. The other one is the reciprocal altruism. What is that? The reciprocal altruism, uh, from the name reciprocal, you can see that there, there, there's two parties. 
when someone does good to you, when someone is altruistic towards you, then they have something in mind that, you know what, I need to, or not I need, but they're expecting a favor in return. You know, it's, it's inclined towards helping you in the future, that person. You know, it's basically a, like karma. What goes around comes around. A lot of people have this idea that karma is only for a negative thing. Absolutely not. It's for a positive thing. Karma, what goes around, you do goodness, goodness is coming, coming back to you. This basically what reciprocal altruism means. But we just got a text message from Al Zian uh, from Peshawar. Uh, okay, not Al Zian, just Al Zian, okay, from Peshawar. He says, Yeah, I think there is a limit uh, to altruism. I think that one should not harm oneself for another. He or she may help, may help, but not may help, but not to the extent uh, of harming. The person himself. Thank you very much. You're, okay, I don't want to talk about Muslim, but thank you very much. Al Zain uh, from Peshawar. Uh, very beautiful city, by the way, Peshawar. Um, yes, uh, sorry? Okay, so yes, thank you very much, I Jason, for clarifying the text message. Uh, now, now, unlike uh, biological altruism, uh, the reciprocal is trying to see if there's something in return. You know, for example, and half of the time, if not most of the time, we do good to others. That person, we might not ever see them again. You know, sometimes opening the door for someone, that's generosity, but being nice, opening the door for someone, that doesn't mean that that person has to, you know, return the favor and opening the door for you. You know, altruism goes to to the fact, you know, when, when you're driving and you see your, someone, not even just your friend, someone who's walking in the rain, will you stop and pick that person up? And if they tell you that their house is far and not on your way, would you still drive them? You know, s spend a little bit of gas, spend a little bit of time, drive someone to their home, would you do that? I would, I just wouldn't. I'm just kidding. But what we're trying to say is that just a step extra to generosity. Or sometimes people will drop them to, 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 to the closest point uh, to their house where they can catch a bus. Generosity, yes, it's a, good, it's, it's a good step that you're dropping in something close to their house, but at the same time, taking them and saving that time and that effort of them waiting under the rain or in, in, in snow blizzards as we, as we have in Canada, just drive them to their home, that is called altruism. Bus stop generosity, Altruism is you drive them. This is just a, a prime example of what we're trying to talk about tonight. Now, what do people gain from altruism? Now, if we were to mention just a few examples, gaining, we'll get to mention it later on. But if we were to mention a few examples in history of those who were altruistic, of those who were willing to put their life on the line to save others. A lot of people would try to think Ahlul Bayt. Absolutely Ahlul Bayt, but we're trying to find other people. But after this quick break. Once again, we welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, before the break, we were trying to find through history of those uh, who are considered altruistic. One prime example of altruism or a person that was altruistic in his life, Martin Luther King Jr. Now, this individual who recognized the need for basic civil rights, you know, for all people, he was willing to put his life on the line to bring justice to his people and support his belief. Then he was ultimately killed later on, but it still shows that he reached, he, he accomplished something. This is why um, our brothers from Africa, you know, the African Americans now have rights. Yes, uh, Martin Luther King had a role to play in bringing the rights to the black nation into America. Now another one, a missionary, Mother Teresa, who, who is known for her charity work and altruism 
um, in, in developing or underdeveloped countries. Now all of these are pretty good examples of altruism and we do salute these individuals. But at the same time we have to look at one example through history. True story, a family of four or five, four, very true story, a family of four. These guys, the, 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 the head of the family, the father, used to work in a merchant's farm. So he would, he would give them uh, some money or he would give them some wheat. So the, the, the father got the wheat, took it home for three days. There's a, there was a vow that this family had to uh, accomplish or do if something happens. So the father brings home the flour, the mother makes the bread, the first day they're fasting. Keep in mind, this is not Ramadan. This is regular days. Three day vow to fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first day, the mother gets the bread ready. They have water. As soon as they're sitting down to break the fast, the door gets knocked. The father gets up, goes to see who's on the door. It's a needy, some, someone who's poor. What does the father do? He picks up the plate. With, and reminder, there's the mother, father, and then there's the two children, two small children. So what does the dad do? His generosity, he's generous, yes, but he wants to take it up a notch. So he picks up the whole plate and gives it to that needy. So the family of four, two, uh, two parents, uh, and, and you know, the, two, the two kids, they end up just drinking water, breaking their iftar with water until the next day. The next day comes, they fast again. It's time to break the fast. The door gets knocked. Same with bread and water. The door gets knocked. The father gets up again and goes to the door to see there's an orphan. At that time, any of us would get, we, we, we get angry. You know, so as soon as I'm going to eat, break my fast, especially during the fast, someone gets irritated. But this, I don't know, to what level of altruism and you know, forbearance he had. Anyway, so he, he takes the plate, gives it to the orphan. The family stays with only water. They drink water to the next day. The next day, they also are fasting. They come to break their fast again for the third day in a row. The door gets knocked. At this time, Ahmed Ali would get angry. Like, why is my door getting knocked every time I'm trying to eat? But yet this individual, this father, would still, no, you know what? The door got knocked. He goes again. He sees it's a captive that was just released uh, from war. So what does the, 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 the captive say? He says, I'm hungry. Same as the other ones. So the father picks up the plate again and gives it to that person. For three consecutive days, this family had only water to break and begin their fast. This is a very true story, which happened centuries ago. The father was Ali Nabi Talib. The mother was Fatima al-Zahra. And the two children were Hassan and Hussein. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in chapter 76, verse 8, He says about this family, He says, And they feed for the love of Allah, the needy, the orphan, and the captive, the prisoner. Chapter 76, verses 8, verse 8. Some of you might thought that it's, 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 it's a story you know, that happened just a few days or just a few years ago. This is a story that happened 1400 years ago where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions or reveals, doesn't even, He reveals a whole verse about this family. Tell me who through history donated to these three, the needy, the orphan, and the captive. No other than Ali ibn Talib, Fatim, Tazara, Hassan, and Hussein. Absolutely no one. But we do remind everyone to call in and send us a text message. Uh, at the number shown below, we just got a text message, okay. Uh. Okay, so we have uh, Sadun, Sadun, I don't know, but uh, maybe Sadun from Iraq, a uh, very famous name in Iraq. But Sadun from Iraq, he says, Yes, a limit exists 
we, we do apologize for the technical difficulty and delay, but Sa'dun from Iraq says, yes, a limit exists when we Iraqis say, may I be sacrificed for you, or, or fidwa aruh lak. Oh, this guy. Okay, uh, that is just said because even if we love that person, we are not willing to die for them. Wow, this guy. It's 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 a beautiful example, Sa'dun. I hope when you say to your wife, I love you, you actually do love her. Uh, but anyways, you know, thank you very much for participating. Uh, but uh, Iraqis, just to give a disclaimer out, they have the most romantic slurs or the, the, the most romantic sayings that they'll ever say to you. Uh, but as we were just mentioning, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's another verse in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not achieve the pleasure or the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you donate what you love the most. Now I speak for myself. I'm, I'm not speaking for the general public. But am I or are you willing to spend the only thing you love? For example, what do people love the most right now? If you were to ask anyone right now, what is the only thing you love in this world? Some may say family, some may say friends, technology, but many will say money. Are you willing to spend the money that you love so much in order to seek the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You will not reach the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you donate, until you give from whatever you like or from whatever you love. So t to that level that altruism comes to be. You know, we love money so much, but it's not impossible. It's not hard uh, for us to spend like $10 from our salary each month to, you know, give it up for charity. Ten dollars, trust me, when someone's getting uh, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, even a thousand dollars, ten dollars, yes, it make a difference throughout the month. But trust me, you're gonna have nine hundred and ninety dollars, but that person, that poor person, is gonna have only ten dollars to spend. So imagine that little that you take away from your salary is so much to that poor person. Always keep that in mind. That's where altruism. Begins, but we just got a text message from. Okay, Sheikh Jassim uh, from Canada. Oh, I hope that's not my dad, but Sheikh Jassim Karbala. Oh, not sorry, not Karbala. Sheikh Jassim, not Karbala. Sheikh Jassim from Canada. He said uh, we should give whatever we can, but no to the point, but not to the point uh, of harming ourselves because the harm of oneself is haram. In religion, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Jassim or Sheikh from uh, Canada, for joining us tonight and letting us know uh, what you think about tonight's question. And no, not Jassim to Italian, but uh, this is just a comment that I got him in. But yes, uh, undoubtedly, when it comes to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, the true embodiment of the Holy Quran, it's important to keep one thing in mind that they are our role models. The story that I mentioned earlier about. Imam Ali and Lady Fatima and Imam Hassan and Hussein, peace and blessings be upon them. Yes, they were altruistic, they were hungry, they were fasting, but yet they still gave away their food. Ahl al Bayt are there for, for, for the highest example. No one can reach what they have done. Even if we try to do it, then we'll probably do it as, as, as a test to see how much we can you know, take. But at the same time, they're trying to show us that even if you give that little you know, bread, which is 90% of the time thrown in the garbage, and all due respect to our Islamic centers, but come on, the amount of food that's thrown after the majalis, it's a lot. What we need to do is be altruistic and give to the needy, even if they're not Muslim. So what? Give to the needy and let the needy know about who you are and about what Islam is. Now, if we were to go through history and found one person, if we're trying to look at one person who said there is no limit to altruism, you know, all of them said, you know, all, all, the, all the participants said 
that there is a limit to altruism. But if I was to tell you there's one person that lived on this planet that said there is no limit to altruism. The person whose sister on the night of Ashura, the night after Ashura, goes up to check up on the bodies that, and she, she's tried to see where her brother is. Where are the companions of her brother? She goes to see a headless body, severed. And then a little girl crying next to the body. Who is that person? The little girl, Ruqayya, says, that is my father, Hussein. She looks, where is her? She puts her hand under the body of Imam al Hussein and says, O oh Allah, in kana hada yurdik fakhud hatta tal. O Allah, if this is what satisfies you, then take until you are satisfied. Sorry, this is what Hussein is saying, not Zainab. Imam al Hussein says, if this satisfies you, Allah, then take until you are satisfied. To the point where in Ziyarat al Arba'een, we hear the Imam in the Ziyarah, we say, وَبَدَلَ مُهْجَتَهُ فِيكْ لِيَسْتَنْقَذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَ وَحِيرَةَ الظَّلَالَ And he sacrificed his life for you to save your servants from the ignorance, from the yoke of ignorance and confusion, confusion of straying off, of deviation. He sacrificed everything, his life, the life of his sons, his family got uh, became captives and prisoners, yet Imam al Hussein still gave everything and gave his own life as well for the sake of humanity. This is what true altruism means, and that's I think for me that's the limit of altruism. I don't know how what, what else a person can do. But lastly, thank you very much for those who joined us, and let us learn from these individuals to become altruistic. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.